Morning, y'all. It's Friday. What a week. We're up to £14,000 on donations. Just can't say thank you enough times. Probably said it too many times, but I'm still going to say it. Thank you. Now, Under Armour want to join in now. So they've got five pairs of Spieth 2 golf shoes to give away. Anyone who's already donated, if you want to donate, if you haven't already, link down in description. You will be entered into the draw, still to win the Mizuno Irons, and now we've got five pairs of Under Armour Spieth 2 golf shoes to give away as well. Thanks for joining in Under Armour. Thank you all for your generosity, and if anyone hasn't donated already, or you're watching this video for the first time, down in that link below, follow that link, see what we're up to. Join in, it's for Children's Hospice Southwest. Right, today's vlog, where's my Iceland cup? There you are. It's gonna answer a question that reoccurs. Now, not many people ask this question, but it does go around a lot. And it's one of those questions I always think that, it's like it's like one of those classic golf ones where people think it makes sense what they're saying, where actually they're not really saying anything if they think about it. So I'm gonna try and tackle it today in the hope that I get asked it less. <laughs> So the question was, it was a comment on a YouTube video. It said, respect the honesty to do with, it was to do with Tiger Woods' swing analysis. Remember that video, I think, which was on Monday. You know, how about how can they analyze it on video and la di da da. Nicholas had no access to TrackMan or high-speed cameras. Guess he did okay. Now, regardless of the context that this is asked in, that reoccurring question of how did those old great players become great without the use of technology, kind of hinting that we don't really need technology, we're going to deal with that and what I think technology does for me and for you as the students, for the companies building the clubs, the custom fitters, all those kind of things, just so we can have this and you can post comments down below obviously always and we can have an open debate about the goods and the bads and the ideas around how technology is having no effect on the game and in other places maybe having a huge effect. So this common human kind of reaction to technology, I think is interesting because it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's in golf or if it's to do with these in life or kids playing on the streets and not, like it kind of just, it constantly runs, but at the same time, humans just constantly push forward and technology just constantly push forwards, doesn't it? Like it's, it's just gonna happen. The idea that Jack, Tom Watson, Lee Trevino, Ben Hogan, those guys were as great as they were without technology, is no different to saying, well, I wouldn't say technology has particularly made Dustin Johnson, Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, Adam Scott, whoever you want to choose, particularly much better either. I, I would imagine it's helped them understand distances and how to control them a bit more and how to try and manage spin with their equipment to ball, to clubs, to how they might even play a club, you know, into a green. But to then execute that in situation at the right time when they're playing, what, 11 events, 15 events that year, you know, see what I mean? It just, it's going to be almost impossible to measure for them. The best players are going to be the best players of their time, subject to the tools and opportunities that they've got of their time. So the best players who used hickory shafts were the best players using that equipment at that time, and then the best players using metal woods for the first time were the best players of their time using that equipment. You, you can only play the game that's in front of you at the time period that you play it. Because Launch monitors, technology, 3D body mapping, launch monitors is the common one that people are obviously talking about, GC Quad like I use or Trapman or what have you. They're just tools, like a putter's a tool. They're just tools like golf shoes are a tool. And as long as everyone gets access to them, certainly in their game, then it's still level, it's still the best come through. So it's one of those ones where people think like they're saying something about modern and not, but at the same time, if you think about it, they're actually not really saying anything. Like you could argue that, well, they get fly on personal jets around the PGA Tour in America, so surely they must be less fatigued and might be able to have more time at home with their families, which will make them happier, compared to Gary Player who had to get a boat to the Open, which took probably a two weeks or something. Do you see what I mean? It's like, life just moves on, doesn't it? Surely, it's got to move on. Oh my word. 
We're talking studio design, Scotty Cameron. Oh, it's the custom shop. Are you ready for this? <laughs> oh my word. Oh, look at the shaft as well. I mean, I am not a shaftoid, but I like the colour of that one. Pimp my putter. What I think is really sad with the whole technology over years and different generations ideas, and I think some people on telly pedal this in a really negative way, wouldn't it be great to have data from Hogan, Trevino, Watson, Nicholas. We have data on their wins. We're collecting data on their victories, how successful their careers are. Wouldn't it have been great to have data on how that happened? To learn from any of the patterns. To see what speeds we use, the angle of attacks, any impact location ideas. As a coach, I want as much information as possible about good players, any standard players, beginners, that's what's going to make me a better coach. That's what's going to make me give you better information. At the end of the day, learning from any golfer, particularly the best, is a great way to see what makes people great. Is it the club? Is it the makeup of the body? Is it the delivery? Is it a combination of all the things? If we don't measure, if we don't use facts, if we stay in cliches, golf seems to like to use tradition as a weapon against itself sometimes, I think. Putting completed. Don't see the point, you just don't miss. You know, that, none of that was edited at all. They all did just go in, didn't they? Yo. <laughs> See you later, bro. <laughs> I'm going to Dawlish. Hello, Dawlish Warren. It's cold, but the sky is blue. Got about an hour. I think my last point when it comes to launch monitors and their effects on if you're skilled or not is where's the problem in quantifying the information you give? I literally see no problem with quantifying any information that you give out with measured facts. Like that is only good for you who's trying to spend money on clubs, on lessons, watching videos to try and get better. There's so much cliche in this game and there is so much. Our game is awful for rating people on their associations. So I go and stand next to a tour player and I'm teaching them. All of a sudden you will think I'm better. I'm no different. And it's something that for me that I've never wanted to do so I don't put myself in those positions. Rating system in our game is so skewed. You can just see it from the people who get the jobs on the telly and all those kind of things. It's such a basic understanding of the skills needed to understand the information to make you better. The biggest thing I find when it comes to having issues with technology and I found this a lot when launch monitors came around on the scene to start it was interesting how much when you use measured data they prove lots of things you believe and maybe lots of things you had been teaching for quite a while weren't maybe the best things to teach and what I find still now to this day and have done over the years is the pros or the people who are willing to adapt and change and learn embrace the power of quantified statements where it's blatantly obvious there's still plenty who fear that that validation might prove that maybe they're not saying things they should be saying or that are helping in any way right i gotta get home and mrs parfield and aldis are going to the ballet made it home one injured foot sprained ankle at school to try and cheer, it's just me, Orla and Milo up, so to cheer littlest one up, we're gonna go to the pizza shop. Pizza Hut! 
So you used to find that funny? Now it's just turned into a seriously average dad joke, isn't it? We're now 15,700. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. I've moved it up to 20,000 pounds. Link down below if you want to win one of the five pairs of Under Armour Speed 2 shoes by next Tuesday. Also still up for grabs my MP5, so Mizuno MP5 irons, including random six iron and dirt from quite a lot of countries around the world. That's another donation. Thank you, whoever that was. Post comments down below, let me know what you think about my ideas put forward. I think it's such a shame that technology isn't embraced more, we can still keep the traditions of the game. I think the people who benefit the most from technology, me definitely as a coach, then in turn my students. They pay money, hard earned money, I can quantify if I'm helping them or not. They're not relying on ridiculous cliches. Rory McIlroy is going to be one of the best players with or without that coaching. That coaching helps, that coaching can gain the 1%, the 5%. It can also make the difference between inspiring someone to play or not. Lots of people do relate through their coaches or their pros. It's their connections at their club and I think that gets overlooked as much as anything else. But me personally, when I am taking money from a student, I want to be able to prove to them and almost anyone in the world from peers to anyone who wants to watch that I have changed their delivery and we can now monitor if that improves them or not. Let me know what you think. Keep donating if you haven't already, down in that link. What a difference we're making. Have a great weekend. See you all on Monday.